Look at the announcement first of all before, Andrew, we go on to talk about Bridget McKenzie and the Prime Minister's response on that. But 50 councils or 50 plus councils to receive up to $1 million under this extended drought communities program. The Prime Minister keen to say and remind those communities that despite the fact that the fires have taken so much of our attention, of our funding, our resources, that the drought does remain a priority for this government. Yeah, really firm, wasn't it? And a contrast to his slow start out of the blocks on the bushfires, I guess. And I think from now on, these sorts of events, you'll see that sort of strong rhetoric from Scott Morrison, uh, a sign he wants to show people that he cares about the plight of people doing it tough out there, particularly in regional Australia. When it comes to the McKenzie issue, Andrew, he basically stuck to that line that we've heard now for some time from him and other senior ministers, but there was no, certainly no show of support there except that he said that she remains in Cabinet and we await the findings of that report. This delay is meaning that this whole thing remains in limbo until that Gaetans report is delivered to Prime Minister Morrison. And it might take until the end of the week. Um, but he was clear there, he hasn't received the report yet. Uh, we know Bridget McKenzie came back with her answers to the allegations that are contained in the report Friday afternoon. Phil Gaetan's working his way through that before he delivers it to the PM and the PM takes action. Andrew, we've got some uh, fresh revelations when it comes to this McKenzie issue that we should bring to our viewers now. And you've, you've found out essentially that there's a view within the government that the Auditor General findings about the, the, the targeted political seats, that that all incredibly came from one email that was the smoking gun for the Auditor. Yes, one critical email, Kieran. So what I've learned is that the discovery by the Audit Office of a list of targeted and marginal seats, which was kind of the most explosive part of that Auditor General's report, uh, which formed the basis of the Audit Office's view on how the grants were dished out by Bridget McKenzie, came from one email. And that email was sent from one advisor to themselves, from one either private address to work address or vice versa, I've been told, in order that it could be printed out, which is the evidence the Audit Office obtained, I've been told, which led them to uncover the rorting of the scheme. So you saw references in that Audit Office report to the fact that the, how the money was divvied out was dependent on whether uh, seats were targeted or marginal. That evidence for the Audit Office was in a solitary email. A bit of a mistake from an advisor in that office, you'd have to suggest. I mean, yesterday, just to recap, Karen, we heard from a whistleblower who told us that, that they and other staff had warned of the Minister's then Chief of Staff before the last election that the way the grant scheme was being administered had the potential to blow up into a scandal. Ms McKenzie's office did not deny those exchanges. Her former Chief of Staff, Richard Hyatt, has contacted me. He has denied the exchanges, but I believe my sources uh, account of events. And, as you know, we were also able to reveal how loosely the grants were administered, where the Minister, on a couple of occasions at least, was going on trips, coming back to the office, said, saying, find a grant, put it through Sport Australia. That wasn't mm -hmm. denied by the Minister. And we also discovered that she commissioned a $160,000 survey into whether shooting was good for your health, which couldn't really give us an answer to that. No, it, it gave us not much of an answer at all. We've heard from the Labor spokesman on health today, Andrew. Let's bring, recap for our viewers what Chris Bowen had to say in the wake of that report by Andrew yesterday. Things are pretty bad when you've got your own office engaging in whistleblowing against you. When it gets that bad, it's time to look in yourself in the mirror and decide it's time to resign. And if you won't resign, it's time for the Prime Minister to sack you. This should not go on one day longer. Yeah, and Andrew, as we've uh, heard from the Nationals themselves and your phone calls today, the positioning, apparently internally, is already happening. They're not awaiting Bridget McKenzie to step down. No, not at all. I mean, what I've established today is there's talk of a deal. Uh, only in the event, it has to be said, where Miss McKenzie resigns or is sacked, where David Littleproud would become the deputy leader and Matt Canavan would become the Senate leader. Uh, you know, there's been a bit of conjecture around, including in the press, as to whether...
Barnaby would run for deputy leader. I have to say that's not expected. And Barnaby is not ring Barnaby Joyce is not ringing around. In fact, I understand some MPs have rung him to urge him not to stand in the event of a deputy leadership contest. Saw quite a strong performance there, Kieran, from David Littleproud at the press conference. He was putting the onus on the states uh, in terms of saying to them that they need to do more and, and, and really coming up with some strong rhetoric, a bit of an audition almost for the deputy leadership, it seemed to me. But he also made an interesting comment when asked about the drought grants, which juxtaposed against the sport rock grants doesn't look so good. Let's have a listen to that. The Australian, this is Australian taxpayers' money. We've got to be careful with it, and it's got to go to those in most need. But under each one of these, you have to have a set criteria, a definition around it, to make sure that there's transparency and confidence in the process. So, interesting words there. We, we talk about taxpayers' money. How credible <laughs> does that look when you look at the $160,000 shooting survey, Kieran?